welcome back to Outside the Blocks. It's been a while, but it's good to be back because now we have something fun for you. Something really, well, it's actually more fun for me as a history nerd, but as a guy who wants to educate the masses, I feel like this is going to blow your mind. It's going to blow your internet balls off. I cannot wait for you to see this. This, of course, is a very cool project, but why should I explain it? Batari's going to do it for me. What? What? Where are we? What? This is very Asian-y. What are we doing? Right. So this is the visitor's center, um, which is next to the project. Um, so basically, Project 1845 is a is repl replicas of world heritage world heritage sites in China, um, including the main part, which almost everyone out there knows, is the replica of Beijing. Um, from the 18th century. So before any Western architecture was around, um, minus the Catholic cathedral. <laughs> That's the only piece of Western architecture. But the rest is all Chinese. Um, so, yeah, in a nutshell. <laughs> wow, that sounds impressive. Let's see this thing. All right, so out here is a scale model of the project. Look at this! Okay, so this map down here, which, as you can tell, is probably the least interesting part, is the uh, replica. Um, so every it shows you which parts have had some work done on them, and if you stand underneath the exclamation points, it teleports you to that um, location on the map on the on the larger project. Oh, that's awesome! So, so all the different. Colors of grass, I guess you would say, are different. Uh, that's a yeah. Building. The the lighter green it means there's something there, and oh. the ones that have got a bit grayer lines, like in the middle right here, are the bits that are actually like completed quite densely. Um, so yeah, I I can't even imagine what this actually looks like based on this. Each block represents a. About 200 by 200 blocks in wow. the actual project. Two, four, six. Yeah, about two, f 250, 200. About, yeah, about there. Um, so this is just outside of the project, which is why we've got nice Chinesey mountains and a nice gate. I love, I love the dragons. I tried for maybe a full year to make something decent like that, and... No, I can I cannot I cannot do that. You have created things that I am well I can't of creating. I can't take credit for that gate in particular. Um, one of the volunteers, one of the many volunteers to the project, um, built that um, for the visitor center, um, and we've had since today actually marks the day for two years since we began. Wow. Um, so yeah, we've had at least seventy volunteers. Um, help out at some point in time. That that is beyond impressive. Now, what was the what was the impetus of this server? How did this start? Like, why did you guys decide to do this? Uh, well, I two years ago to the day I was at the time living in I was living in Beijing. Uh, I was working there, um, and I had been playing uh, Minecraft for. A few months, and I, because at the time I was working for Zam Network, um, so the people who brought you Wowhead and a whole bunch of other um, MMO websites, um, one of my colleagues did a review of Minecraft, and I thought I'd give it a go, um, which I did, and I quickly realized the true scope that the um, that Minecraft could take, and I thought I'll do something worthwhile that can be beneficial to others. Um, and I noticed that no one had built a scale replica of the Forbidden City. Um, and since the Forbidden City was literally down the road, I thought I'll take the opportunity so I can see it more times than I can count in real life and collect research material to try to get it as accurate as possible. Uh, during that construction period, I stumbled across um, the rear map that is my blueprint for um, for the entire project of the Beijing section. 
So, yeah, so I found the map and it just clicked. I instantly knew what I wanted to do with it and I knew I wanted to do it all. Um, it's just my brain hadn't caught up to figure out how much work it was going to take. Um, so, but we know that it's going to take another 10 years, well, four to 10 years, depending on um, volunteer participation. Um, wow. And I got to, since I lived in China and I got to see in person um, what it was like, and I came to understand that the media in um, Western culture portrays China very differently than what it actually is. So I, I decided that this project um, is a small part of it, but basically this project in general is my life's work to help the West understand that we're all, we're all in this together and there's no reason for us to think China's bad. They're just different but they're just as different as we are, as the West is different to the East. So the main focus of this project is the um, immersion um, effects that you get. While it looks all pretty, but when you see it in first person and you walk around it, you realise that this is the exact same thing that emperors for centuries have been walking past. Or um, you can see how emperors did their harvest rituals at the Temple of Heaven, or you know, things like that, that people can be immersed entirely in and realize, hey, they're not that much different from us and from what we've done. So, yeah, that's basically the whole project in a nutshell and why we're doing it. Very cool. A, a man after my own heart. I love it. So I've noticed in this area, we have lots and lots of pieces like parts of buildings. So is this how you build? Yeah, this is the Builders Institute. So all our volunteers um, know this area pretty well. It's all our custom examples. Um, we have over 600 kinds of trees. Um, and you've got from like water wells to all interior decorating, uh, to roofing, to what farmland should look like how roads should look like, walls should look like. Basically, any little aesthetic feature, we try to have an example in here so volunteers don't have to um, have their brain melt from trying to find these examples in the actual project. Um, wow. Since there will be, by the time it's finished, over 700,000 unique structures in the project. And and how many are done right now? Uh, I... Don't have an exact number, but I believe that it's around the 2,000 mark. So this is Jongnan Hai, which is an island next to the Forbidden City, inside the, the lake that's there. And at the moment, it is off limits to the public, like in real life, because this is where the Chinese premier, so the person that's in charge of the whole country, lives on this. This is his personal residence um, which is in modern day it's it looks well basically it's the same setup as you see now all thanks to google earth giving um lots of <laughs> um backup information that the uh, my blueprint map doesn't hold uh since i use i use google earth a lot for this project mainly so i compare and cross-reference what was standing then and what is standing today. And that way I can get specific measurements. Um, the buildings are with, within the limit of Minecraft. The buildings are actually within 99.5% accurate. Um, wow. Within the limits of all the blocks being covered. Yeah, there. blocks, right. Yeah. Right. Uh, the, there was, a, uh, for example... Uh, about a year and a half ago, I was building one of the walls um, around the city. And on the map, I noticed that it was dead straight. And on Google Earth, it was slightly tilted. It wasn't perfect west to east. It was about 0.5 degrees, you know, diagonal. And I thought, that's small enough, that's, you know, to get the world Guinness World Record, we have to have it at least 95% accurate. So I thought, oh, I'll just build it straight. No worries. 
three weeks later, I finally get from the west end to the east end. And when I get to the east end, I find that the end is 150 meters away from where it should be. So I had to destroy the whole thing and start from start over and add in wow. that 0.5 degree tilt to it. So, so the accuracy is extremely high. If we don't have the accuracy that high, nothing will fit. And, and how do you how do you build this stuff? Are you using? Uh, I saw you had the design and the schematics. Is it people are just doing it block by block by block, or are you using uh, uh, tools to help you? We are using some tools, so World Edit is useful for long, straight things, so like roads and that are being World Edited in. If we, I calculated that if we had a team of 20 people working on this project 40 hours a week, and we built it all without any plugins or that, it would take 180 years. Oh my. That's without any plugin help. So wow. the plugins aren't. And when you say, well, it's kind of stupid to do it without plugins when you get to that kind of, you know, level of work. So World Edit for like floor flooring and that has been a great um, help since a lot of um, there's not a lot of grass in Beijing. <laughs> um, Right. There's yeah, it's so it's it's there's lots of foundations, there's lots of um, plazas and that that need lots of blocks just placed and and such. Um, so as you can see inside the buildings, there aren't there aren't things in them. Um, main problem we've recently been starting to f have some focus on interior design, but our main problem is that these blocks represent. Each block represents a cubic meter, um, as Notch has um, publicly said. So these walls have to be a meter thick, and the walls in real life aren't a meter thick. They're only like 20 centimeters thick, a fifth of it. Mm. So the interiors are a lot smaller than what they are in real life, uh, which makes it really hard to do the interiors properly. Um, but due to popular demand of wanting us to do interiors, the major sections like the Forbidden City, we are doing, um, we are do, we are planning to do interior designs for. Now, does that, does that work for you or against you when trying to go for a record? Well, as my original argument against interior design was, if <laughs> I spent an extra 60 seconds on every building, so if I spent one minute flat, on every building to build some interiors that at the end of the project that adds up to about 12,000 work hours. So That's nothing. That's <laughs> nothing. You'll be fine. Well, the project's already had about 6,000 work hours invested See? into it already. <laughs> nothing. Nothing at all. You got it. This is Zhang Yuanmin, which is the number one city gate. Um, for Beijing. Um, so just to the north is Tiananmen Square. As you can see here, you've got the Barbican, the Arrow Tower. Um, these gates, back in the day, these gates were shut at sunset. Um, so literally everyone had a curfew back in the day. Huh. <laughs> um, the only people, there was only one group of people that were allowed through the gates, and those were the people bringing water um, from these special springs, and this was the water that the emperor drank. Mm. So those were the only people that were allowed in and out of the city at night. The water, the water um, delivery guys. Yes, basically just the water delivery. <laughs> Even though there are lots of rivers, lakes, um, and water wells throughout the city. Um, so it was kind of... He's, From an outside perspective, it looks a bit weird. No, he's got <laughs> to he's gotta have through. that Fiji water. I get it. I understand. So if you see these dots floating oh, here. Yes, I do. Which I'm working on. Yep. So this is our near invisible railway system. So we have um, several railway tracks for um, tourists that come onto the server. Huh. Uh, they can jump on these railway tracks and it will take them to the 
the best sites or if they're really adventurous we have a six and a half hour long minecart loop wow. that you get to see about 80 percent of what's built um, and that's constantly being extended by the time we're done that railway loop that shows everything will be about 90 hours to see well to ride the whole thing and i'm the only person that's been stupid enough to ride the whole thing all right so this not so interesting looking gate huh. is actually where the modern it's right in the middle of where modern day Chemin Mao's mausoleum is standing really and it used to be the entrance to the original Tiananmen Square huh. so this is the, so this here is what the original Tiananmen Square used to look like which is about a third of the size of what it is today okay so um, when I found Tiananmen Square on my blueprint map, I thought it was strange how small it was. And I did some further research and I know that the Communist Party actually tripled the size of Tiananmen Square. While I asked locals in Beijing when I was living there, and they said they were under the impression that the Communists actually shrunk Tiananmen Square. Now, why, why would that be? When in fact they tripled its size. Uh, well, communists being communists, they wanted a lot. They always liked their part, large public gathering places around the middle of cities, um, which they've done here. And some of these semi-constructed um, buildings next to Tiananmen Square, these used to be government offices. Huh. And this is where modern day um, Hall of the People and the National Museum are located in these giant buildings right next to Tiananmen Square. Uh, so this is the front of Tiananmen, uh, this is Tiananmen Gate and Tiananmen Square. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of in a T shape, um, while there's a bit of interesting trivia for you. This section here in front of these bridges to about this hallway, covered hallway section here, is where the modern day Chang'an Avenue, so the main road it's an eight lane road that goes straight through the middle of this now modern day beijing this section of the road is covered in these huge giant red granite bricks basically they're the size of fridges and i found out that those bricks well those blocks are the original tiananmen square blocks and this is a road that gets millions of cars driving over it every day and these blocks are like 800 years whoa, 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 whoa. old and they're only looking old they're not tracking so so there's a road that so where's the the road is from over here so the modern so the modern day road starts about here where i'm placing that okay. black and goes all the way to about uh back here and roughly. Then it goes the distance this way the way that i'm going now yeah and it goes yeah yeah, that way and back. That so is crazy. This big road, it's got the it's got the original eight hundred year old bricks that these millions of cars every year are driving over. But then you also got to remember that these are the the bricks that um, also like the Tiananmen um, massacre happened mm -hmm. on. They haven't replaced them, <laughs> which makes them a bit extra creepy. So this next gate is. Um, the Annam Gate, which we will travel through. Uh, these ones, they have the side ones open, um, and the public goes through. The public don't usually go through the middle one uh, because traditionally that was reserved for the ah, emperor, okay. and like the only emperor and the people that um, pass the imperial examinations to become a. Um, bureaucrat um, could pass through this um, bureaucrats on the graduation day could pass through the central gate um, modern day Beijing it is mainly the National Guard that travels through that for the um, flag raising and dropping ceremonies at sunrise and sunset now what about the areas um, but they do open it to the public once in a while what about the areas up top I noticed there's it's there's a whole stretch uh, up here I assume that's just for ornate purposes but it, does anyone do anything up there ever the back in the day there were like it was a 
basically they were just viewing platforms, so it was more of an ornamental defensive structure than an actual defensive structure. Uh, um, while the next gate that we're about to get to was in fact defensive structure and was where the emperor gave, if the emperor needed to give any instructions, so if there was an army about to go, the emperor would stand above this gate that you're about to get to, which this is the Meridian Gate, so this is probably one that's more recognisable to the average person, um, since it's one of the more well-photographed um, gates. And also, these bridges and the small gate here, those were demolished at the turn of the 19th century. So early 1800s, this was demolished and this little river was paved over. Mm. And so this part doesn't exist today. But because it was to the time period of 1750 AD, we kept it. So this leads into the inner palace, so the main section of the Forbidden City that people, Westerners, consider the Forbidden City, but that's only actually one third of the Forbidden City. So this is Harmony Plaza, which leads to the Hall of, I mean, the Gate of Supreme Harmony. Wow, this is this is amazing. Uh, I'm I'm a little like dumbfounded. And also to remember that these buildings have been renovated since they were originally built. Um, like back in the day, this was back in like Beta 1.6. All right, so. Below us is the Gas Room Harmony, and this up along here is the Hall of Supreme Harmony, which is technically the centerpiece of the entire project. It's the most centermost building in the Forbidden City. It's also got floating minecarts above it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this is the this is the main landmark of the entire Forbidden City, which the Dragon Throne. Um, was in the middle of. Um, we're in the process of renovating it since you can tell that the roof um, roof style is different, slightly different from all the rest around it. Um, but this is this is the most you could say the most technologically advanced Chinese building we've built. Is <laughs> um, the like the roof is fifth generation. Um, the interior is like third generation. We've renovated this building more to, well, lots of times, basically, each time improving it. So this is considered the inner court. So this is the main place that the court was hold, held and laws were passed and such. It's also one of the most photographed places in the, the Forbidden City. Yeah, so what is, what is this area behind it? There's a lot of things that are in sets of three. Uh, at the Forbidden City. Uh, this okay. is for the security of the Emperor. So the Hall of Supreme Harmony, uh, major things happened in. So if there was any big event, it would happen in the Hall of Supreme Harmony. Usually other court issues happen in the smaller one, which is the Hall of Middle Harmony, or this back one here, which is the Hall of Preserving Harmony. Um, and because they had these places and the emperor got to choose which one he got to do his work for the day out of, that's to um, hinder assassins, basically. If if the assassin, the assassin will know that, you know, the emperor for the day will be working out of one of the two, and they'll probably be caught when they get, you know, into one of them. And so he's got a 50-50 chance of getting the right one, basically. Interesting. Um, and the section behind it is the Palace of Heavenly Purity, I believe its name is. And basically, these were the three bedrooms of the Emperor. So the Emperor had a bed in each one of these three buildings, and he got to choose which one he slept in each night. I assume for the same reasons, or for well, the exact same reasons. So, if an assassin came in, he only had a thirty percent chance of getting the right building, um, and which is why a lot of these areas are flat plazas and no trees, just so 
defensively, no one can really hide in the shadows. Now, where, where, now, where are the concubines? <laughs> well, they're actually on the other side of the Emperor's bedroom. So if you just I can't them, get there fast enough. <laughs> um, to the left are where the concubines, you, the top concubines live. Now, if you look Ladies, to the, the top, the top, our top but concubines. To the right, near the very okay. tall red gate, is where the fired concubines lived. So when a concubine did something wrong and oh, or the emperor got bored of them, um, they basically got sentenced for life to go here. Oh, this is something I'll show you. So if we hang a left, all these small buildings here is where the eunuchs yeah. lived. Oh, those guys. And if you see the Forbidden City, if you go there in the modern day, you will see that there's these modern-looking government buildings standing where these are. And that's because when the feudal system collapsed and uh, the democratic system came in, the Kuomintang, which was what they were called, which, which is what we call them these days, they wanted to actually demolish the entire Forbidden City and build a parliament there, which, thank goodness, they didn't do that. But they did start demolishing these eunuch housing, since no eunuchs at the collapse um, lived in the Forbidden City anymore. And so this is the back third of the Forbidden City. Uh, the moat, all the dirt that the moat was, not well, that was dug out of the moat, made this hill. So this is Jingshan Hill. Uh, so this was all, this was all handmade in real life and in Minecraft. That we desire, we developed our own scaffolding system to make. And if you look inside, uh, I think you can, yeah, you can over here. Danny. Okay. Yeah. The mountain is technically hollow. We didn't build this in hill re in real life. No, 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 not in real life. In in the project. Oh, all right, yeah. I was about to say like because we didn't build it with voxel sniper or a plugin that was building nice terrain. We basically built the exterior of the hill by hand. This hill took about three months to make. Now, are we still within the walls? Have, have this we... is this is still the Forbidden City. We've basically travelled from the south end, and this big building here is actually the main building at the northern end. So this little fence here is actually the end of the Forbidden City. So why have the ba why is the back so I, well the north so not heavily? Well, the uh, the inner palace has. A very, as you saw, a very strong wall, um, mm -hmm. and the emperor didn't spend much time outside of that that wall. Uh, in the summer, he lived at the summer palace, which was a few um, quite a, a bit outside um, Beijing um, proper, but that thing had a big wall around it. Um, this main section here was, like you can see, to the your, to the west or left. Um, these are like where all the eunuchs worked during the day from preparing food to receiving resources to, yeah, for making stuff and such. Um, so this was a bit more practical part of the, of the Forbidden City. So lots of people walked in and out, um, of it, which of course it was still heavily guarded and, and that, cause there was a lot of expensive things. Like the part you're over right now is modern day. There's a high school there. Really? Yep. So you can go to high school in the Forbidden City. Well, it's not cons This is considered um, a park, park land. Um, oh. It, today, oh. it's not. It by the average person, it's not considered the part of the Forbidden City, even though back in the day it was. Technically. Interesting. Oh, so this is the J. This is Jade Isle. Wow. And Tuan Chung, which is on the other side of this bridge. Um, back when Genghis Khan conquered China, he moved his palace capital onto this island. 
Really? Why so was this that? island is, uh, it's it's an island and a lake. It's perfect defensive structure. Um, so this is where basically where Genghis Khan ruled China from Interesting. himself personally. Um, he moved, even though the capital was in the middle of Mongolia, um, even though, well, technically that's where the capital was for him, but his main palace that he worked out of to govern everything was on this island, which modern day, it's a Buddhist, well, it's a park and it's a Buddhist um, shrine. Um, that's awesome. So on the other side of this lake, which is um, a name I've forgotten. <laughs> well, I see that there are signs around, so anyway. there's got to be a sign somewhere, right? Yeah, well, um, I'm still – we the educational version of this map that's used in Minecraft to EDU, um, it's got a lot more thing, a lot more things named and that because we do have students and that learning Chinese um, through using this map. Interesting. They're also learning history and um, geography. and We've got team building exercises like we've got a map – for the uh, Minecraft EDU that the Forbidden City is covered in sand and these um, students have to do archaeological digs. All right, so this is what this is the main Temple of Heaven for the average person. So there's the big Temple of Heaven that everyone knows about. This is meant to be the Temple of Heaven that the average commoner could go to. And why I say this was complicated is if you look at this particular roof, not only is it circular, which is extremely hard in Minecraft, as everyone knows, it's also flared. So to try to make a three-dimensional curve... That is really cool, yeah. Minecraft is, is actually... Yeah, we've pulled out plenty of hair trying to build this, and we've had debates over single blocks. It's that complicated which is why we haven't renovated it <laughs> from the ground it looks uh, terrific yeah this is great and inside it looks um just as nice uh the chinese have this aesthetic rule that if anything's plain that it should be decorated basically so they don't like unlike the west that we like plain clean walls with one color um the chinese think that if anything's plain there should be a pattern put on it which is why the the roof ceiling in this um, temple here is all covered in squiggles and. That's great. I like I like I like their I like their views on on style. Just stick stuff on everything. Oh, cool. so this is the temple of heaven that the um, emperor did his harvest rituals, um, and that um, which there's still a lot of work to do here, but this is. Uh, particularly um, special building because it is the only other building that is circular. So if you just... Well, I'm, cu I'm curious. I see this giant road all the way over here. And if everything's to scale, uh, where are we in relation to the actual like city emperor's residence? Yeah, so this is right near the south end of the entire city. Um, yeah, so the... This is one, this, the Temple of Heaven compound, the whole, the whole thing, all the buildings and everything close in the wall is about two and a half times larger than the Forbidden City. But most of that is actual forest in that, so not Is it still that way that today? interesting, but it's, it's, they've lost the outer section, so it did have several walls that enclosed right to this point um, but the outermost that was um, torn down and there's now sky high rises and, and that so situation. someone someone but lives, all this someone lives in the in in penthouse suite very close to this then yes um, and this is a this is a public and this is a public park um, one day so this is the only other circular building built in the whole project and I believe we have one other and that's for the entire Beijing city only has like two or three circular Now buildings. why is that? Why why uh, so stingy on the circles? 
They probably knew Minecraft was coming. <laughs> they just knew. <laughs> I don't know how they just um, did. Well, circles are meant to represent the sky, heaven, and such. And since this is um, the there was heaven worship um, back in the day, so it was seemed appropriate that the main buildings for um, worshiping heaven were to be circular. Yeah, the back in the day, this is going probably thousands of years, there was a guy named Lu Ban, and he wrote the book on Chinese architecture. When I mean he wrote the book, I mean he literally wrote the book, as in there's a giant book on how to build every single kind of building, and the Chinese have been following that rule book ever since. That's kind of funny. Um, and so, which means that general design concepts are repeated all across the place. Aesthetically, they've changed and tweaked over time. Is it, is, is that, is it um, the idea of, uh, like, Feng Shui? Is that what that's like? Where certain, certain things need yeah, to be in certain Feng places? Yeah, That kind of thing. I, I realize it's not the same, yeah. but, like, that general idea? Yeah, yeah. The general idea, it's it's identical, like, um, like how the Forbidden City has that hill behind it, because in Feng Shui, um, you should have something blocking... Um, the view to the north to stop bad spirits. But then you've also got the practical point is that um, <laughs> if you ever go to Beijing and you go there in the middle of winter, um, the highest temperature would be like negative three because, well, negative three Celsius, because the basically all the wind is coming from Siberia. Oh. So it's it's actually frigid. So, which, so there's very practical reasons why those are there. Um, while it is still technically feng shui, um, like they, the Chinese prefer buildings facing south for feng shui. But then there's the obvious reason is because the sun's in the south, um, and the Chinese loves town planning and love building cities from scratch. So Beijing is set up in a grid pattern, which is and everybody, most buildings, if not all, are facing south, which is perfect for Minecraft. Which is why I chose Minecraft. Huh. To, build this whole thing on awesome so if you come out through the back door you can see to your left we have this progress marker counter thing that explains how far we've finished mm -hmm. well how far we are um it isn't a live counter so there isn't a plugin that changes the numbers as much as i would like that um but we have a custom plugin that counts all hand placed blocks wow so that big number up there which will eventually be, when it's 100% done, that'll be 2.1 billion blocks. So we're just under 2 billion blocks to go. That's incredible. And that's billion, that's billion with a B, just to make sure the viewers know that. <laughs> awesome. It's wonderful. And uh, again, if people want to get in touch with you on how to be a part of it, what would you suggest? Yep. So if they go to... Um, the web page is project1845.com. Uh, the server is project1845.net.65525, um, which there is no whitelist, so anyone can just rock it up and check out the sites. And you don't have to remember warp names or that, so it is easy to get around. Um, on the website, on project845.com, there's lots of information from downloads to how to volunteer. Um, this is a non-profit project. I'm not earning money from it. <laughs> so any donations that are made through PayPal get funneled into um, the project again. Um, so yes, that's, there's, there's texture pack... Um, and resource packs, so you can use the 1.6 launcher. Um, we have a Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash project1845. Um, we have a Google Plus uh, community also, which the link is on the main project website. Um, yeah, and we're always looking for volunteers, and... Um, don't be afraid to think, oh, project's too big, something like that. We are on track, which means your effort won't be for waste. Mm. And I can't stress that enough. 
a lot of people think that there, you know, one block helps. Right. It, you gotta, it's really hard for volunteers to remember that as every, every block helps. Every block makes it closer. Um, and we've got lots of large events in the pipeline. Um, hopefully, uh, the museum exhibitions that we have planned are a success, um, which we're not afraid that um, that they will be. Um, and hopefully, we plan to send those. We've already got museums in the states and in Europe interested in these um, exhibitions. Uh, and if you want this project in your school, um, try to get them to get the Minecraft EDU, which is at minecraftedu.com. The, this project is the centerpiece for the educational platform that's sold to schools and, and that, so you can have an excuse to play Minecraft at school. Um, any other information would be on our main server community, which is earthrealm.co.uk, um, as the server is part of the Earthrealm server community. Um, it's a fairly new community, but there is a lot of mega builders and creative people on it, um, as the server was on an old server community, but I've recently it's only recently been moved over, which is why we're still setting up the new volunteer system, which should be up and running by the time this video goes live. Uh, and I think that's as much as I need to waffle on about. <laughs> awesome. There you go. Thank you uh, to Batari for showing me around, to everyone who has contributed even the smallest amount in this, and it is impressive. I hope that yes. uh, if you're watching, you decide to help, and we get this done sooner rather than later, so I can come back and see it when it's complete, because it is amazing. We're gonna call this one, The Future! The future. UFO Commander, we are the future. We're gonna take you to the future. Then we're gonna get to the future. Where everyone talks like they're from the future. UFO Commander, we are the future. We're gonna take you to the future. Then we're gonna get to the future. Where everyone talks like they're from the future. Hello, Larry Star. Space just got the number one out of the plan. The main plays the tip top shape. I'm swell shape. And I'm gonna make a fortune for my ass for Shut the balls up. UFO Commander, we are the future. We're gonna take you to the future. Then we're gonna get to the future Everyone talks like they're from Shut the balls up!